Over the past 400 years, the James River has experienced little change. A map published soon after 1607 shows only a slight difference in topography when compared to an aerial map from today. The inhabitants of the land surrounding the river, however, have changed drastically. Long before this map was drawn, the Powhatan lived here and relied on the natural resources of the river for transportation, food, and its streams of fresh water. It was important to the Powhatan to be near a river. Much of their life depended on it. Many lived along what is today called the James River. The native peoples referred to rivers as Yeokanta, and the James was then named the Powhatan Flu. The Powhatan stayed close to the James River, though its main body was too brackish to drink. The river was a source of transportation and food. The Powhatan inhabited the areas of Virginia from the Tidewater to Fall Line regions. There were other tribes around them, maintaining a distance of about three days' travel. The Susquehannocks, Massawomacks, and the Patawomacks to the north the Monacans and Monohoaks to the west, and the Chowan to the south, as well as many other smaller tribes. The Powhatan chiefdom had originally been smaller groups, but were united under a central chief called the Mamanatoic by the late 1500s. By the middle of the 16th century, Chief Powhatan, named at birth Wahong Seneca, had come to power. But how? Powhatan's mother was born at Pamunkey in what is today King William County. His father was from the town of Powhatan at the falls of the James River. Some have speculated a series of chiefly marriages between the river communities gave rise to the original Powhatan Pamunkey chiefdom to include the geography that is today considered the greater Richmond area. Wahon Seneca inherited his position of power through his mother's Pamunkey lineage and became chief about 1565. In some societies, lineage descent determines power, that a particular family holds the leadership of a community. For the matrilineal Powhatan, chiefly power always moved from mother to child and then passing to each sibling according to birth order. When all siblings were dead, the oldest daughter's child would receive power through the matriline. The Powhatan spoke Algonquian, a language family widespread in North America, but did not have a written language, so messages had to be sent in person. Travel might be done on foot but the quickest way to get anywhere was on the river. Wereluances, or village and lineage headmen, traditionally governed local communities, but offered tribute to the great Powhatan. Some Wereluances were appointed. Wereluances would send news as well as goods to Powhatan. Through tribute, all parts of the chiefdom showed their loyalty to their Mamanatoic. Some goods might come from other tribes or regions, making them valuable for their scarcity. When Powhatan was home, he would have taken part in daily life. That life began every day with the river. Each morning, all the Powhatan Indian men would go down to the river to bathe, regardless of age or time of year. Paint, made of natural dyes and bear grease, would be removed and reapplied. Villages were kept near the river. They wanted their source for fresh water, riverine resources, and travel nearby. Women would build the Yehakins, or homes, sometimes called longhouses, 
from saplings and rushes cut by the river. The woven mats would cover the house and provide shelter. These homes were sturdy, but could be torn down and moved in a matter of days. This allowed the Powhatan Indians the flexibility to plant their crops in fertile soil and move as needed when fields were exhausted. The men's space was in the forest, hunting or making war. When men returned from the hunt, they were entering women's territory. Powhatan men were often away from home. Bringing food to the village was their responsibility. One source of abundant food was the river. Fishermen would come home with oysters, mussels, fish, and birds. Land animals depended on the river for water too, so there were many animals to hunt. The Powhatan men were very skilled with bows and arrows. The woods provided a strong hunter with bear, deer, rabbit, and many other animals. This reliance on the land meant that the Powhatan diet changed in substance and amount depending on the season. Once the animal was brought to the village, the job of processing it fell to the women. The tendons, brains, bones, hooves, and skin would all be used. Hides could be made into leather using the animal's own brain. A chemical called tannin kept the skin from rotting. The result would be wearable, useful leather. Any extra meat would be smoked to preserve it. In winter, or Papanau, the Powhatan Indians would eat dried or smoked meat and crops that had been preserved earlier that year. In 1611, English colonists came up the river. Men from Jamestown, suffering from continual illness and hunger, looked for a new site to settle, ultimately creating Henricus. In the land, they found exactly what Native Americans had found hundreds of years before, fresh water, plentiful land, and natural protection. Only one thing stood in their way. The Powhatan's ability to live on the land's natural resources was very impressive to the Jamestown and Henricus colonists. Chief Powhatan did not worry over the few Englishmen, or Tassan Tassas, that arrived in the villages to trade, or who had settled on small pieces of uninhabited land. He worried more over the Monacans, who acted occasionally as partners in trade, but more often as enemies. Initially, Powhatan may have thought that the English were temporary visitors, potential allies, and useful trading partners. Around the time Jamestown was being founded, a Powhatan priest made a prediction, which was retold by Englishman William Strachey in his History of Travel. From the Chesapeake Bay, a nation should arise which should dissolve and give end to his empire. A second prophecy said that twice they should give overthrow and disheartened the attempters and such strangers as should invade their territories or labor to settle a plantation amongst them. But the third time, they themselves should fall into their subjection and under their conquest. To avert the first prediction, Powhatan crushed the Chesapeake, Kekoctan, and Piankatank Indians. The second prediction was thought to be about the Monacans, but came true if applied to the outsiders, the Tassan Tassas, the English. The English and the Powhatan Indians did coexist, but their relationship could always turn tense. They had common qualities that helped cross-cultural understanding, but also strong characters of difference. The Powhatan had their chief, the English had their king. The king depended on his colony's governors, the chief on his werowances. The English were monotheistic, meaning they worshiped one supreme deity. The English worshiped God using a Bible and personal prayer. However, 
The Powhatan worshipped multiple spirit forces through the guidance of their priests, including two named Ahon and Okios. The English erected their forts and struggled to succeed in this new world. Their houses were able to withstand Virginia's weather, but they relied heavily on goods they received. These goods arrived on ships from England and from local tribes. They brought goods that seemed wonderful to the Indians, goods that enhanced status and trading opportunities, though they were not necessary. What the Indians offered was even more wonderful, food. The Indians traded for things they wanted, but the English traded for things they needed. Some items, such as animal pelts, would be traded with the hope of selling them in England, but with unreliable ships and harsh winters, the English needed Powhatan corn and meat to survive. The two cultures occasionally mingled. English men or boys lived with the Powhatan in order to learn their language and act as interpreters, and Powhatan boys were sent to the English. Prisoners were taken and sometimes assimilated into the new culture. One such prisoner was Pocahontas, daughter of Chief Powhatan. She was forced to live among the English and learned the language and customs Pocahontas converted to Christianity and took the name Rebecca. She ultimately married the planter John Rolfe and visited England where she died and was buried. Pocahontas became a popular connection between the two cultures. The English planted their settlements, expanded their croplands, particularly that of tobacco, and stayed, adding more people as ships kept arriving. Their continued growth edged the Powhatan out of their own territory. The Powhatan eventually realized fighting back was their only option. In 1618, Chief Powhatan died. His brother, Opichipam, became the new chief, but his brother, Opi Chankano, soon stepped into the role. Opi Chankano actively fought against the English encroachment, starting in March of 1622 with a great assault that decimated the colonists. War raged for a decade thereafter. The people of the river continued to move, trying to live away from the English, but their lifestyle required land and access to the river's resources. The English made that riverside land unavailable and populated it quickly, and Powhatan communities were forced to adapt. The Powhatan village of Erohatek, located near where Richmond is today, disappeared from historical documents shortly after the English arrived and established Enricus. Little is known about where they went, but they likely merged with the neighboring communities. The 1600s, a time of exploration and colonization of Virginia for the English, saw the end of Native Americans' isolation from Europe. Disease, warfare, and enslavement followed, destroying indigenous people and their societies. Of the Powhatan people that survived, all were eventually assimilated into the English colony. The mighty James River that had brought them so many resources was also the waterway that the colonization of English-speaking America followed. Remarkably, even through 400 years of assimilation and changes, descendant communities of the Powhatan Indians remain today and are part of Virginia society. There are two reservations on the Mattapanai and Pamunkey Rivers, and the Commonwealth is home to nine other state-recognized tribes.